strategy. Who's really good at their double digit multiplication? Colin, you ready? Start with the first one. Tell me what to do. As the Common Core state standards are implemented in school districts nationwide, naturally there are a lot of questions about what the standards are and how they will affect students, your children. Basically, the Common Core establishes a single set of educational standards for kindergarten through 12th grade in English language arts and math. Now there are a lot of resources out there that explain the Common Core in great detail, but we wanted to take the opportunity to show you exactly how the curriculum is being applied in classrooms throughout Broad Alban Perth. We'll start out in first grade, where students in Miss Rogers and Miss Schwartz's classrooms are learning about the human body. Some of you might have thought that the skeletal system, or your skeleton, is scary. But guess what? Skeletons aren't scary. Each one of you has a skeleton inside your body. They love it. They love learning about themselves. They can relate to it, obviously, because they have a human body and it's very interactive. We do the story and then we go back and we are drawing and writing and they're remembering facts. It's not mastery of the human body, it's not an anatomy lesson, but it's um, points of interest to them and I think right now they're really doing a great job. Can somebody tell me some things that are not healthy besides cookies? I did cookies. What else is not healthy, Jocelyn? That unit will um, end with choosing healthy foods and it goes through the whole food pyramid, teaches the kids all the main groups of the food pyramid and it's stuff that they can apply right away because I had kids, you know, I said the other day, what is something that you do that's not healthy right now and that you can change? And you know, one of the kids was like, yeah, I eat a lot of cookies, I could just choose grapes instead. Nutritious, it means it's full of vitamins and nutrients to keep you healthy. The Common Core has actually drawn in much richer vocabulary. The stories that the kids are listening to are totally engaging and so interesting, especially our, our health unit there that we're doing. In math, the first graders are solving basic addition and subtraction problems through number bonds. It was a struggle, absolutely a struggle in the beginning, but I have noticed kids you know, really grasping number sense in math and using those vocabulary words from the listening and learn. And so I think they're adapting well. Coming in, I guess they, they probably knew some basic number sense, they knew some basic facts, but leaving, they're gonna have a better idea of numbers and how numbers work and they're able to solve those addition problems, like word problems, they're able, they're better able to, to think. Common Core Standards are allowing us to go deeper and think more about what we're doing and give the kids a greater sense of what numbers mean. By the end of the year, you know, we want them to be able to be adding numbers um, to 20 and that would be our goal is to, you know, meet those objectives for the, um, and the standards for first grade so that they're prepared and ready to jump right in in second grade. Let's jump ahead to fifth grade, where at the intermediate school, students in Miss Simon's class are figuring out how to estimate and also getting a better understanding of place values. What we need to do now is think about the other way we learn, the mental map, the bubble in your head. And what's happening is we're trying to give them different strategies to understand why they're doing a certain thing, why they're choosing to solve it a different way, and the kids are actually understanding now the reasons why they're doing things. So we could solve it two ways. We know both. Now remind me, standard algorithm. I'm hoping what they'll notice is that what they did in prior weeks all builds. So what the kids are doing is they're basically realizing I did it one way with a smaller number. Now as I move on in math, when they move to sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, they'll be able to use those same skills they learn with me and apply it to even more difficult math. In Miss Hansen's fifth grade class, students are reading the novel Esperanza Rising and analyzing the story through the different viewpoints of its characters. So in our groups, each person has either Marta, Miguel, or Esperanza and their perspectives on the strike. I'm seeing the depth level increase dramatically in the thinking, in the quality of the answers, in the student's ability to infer from text, um, to take things from the text and create their own ideas about it. I'm excited about being one 
one piece of a larger puzzle for the students that is so much more cohesive to know for sure that what I'm doing with them today when they're 10 years old will serve them as they go and give them the skills to be successful academically, interpersonally, as you know, teenagers and as adults, that's really exciting. At the middle school, students in Ms. Thompson and Ms. Ebersall's English class often work in pairs or groups of three to dissect what they're reading and try to decipher new vocabulary words. You, you did say a word that I think, yes, that's the word. An intruder, someone who is unwelcome. A good reading strategy is the use of context clues. What's before the word I don't know, what's after the word I don't know. And then, uh, of course, the protocol, the modules ask them to think about those things first and then talk to each other about them. It's more of a student-focused classroom. Uh, students are relying on each other more so than they are on us. Um, so in the past, we've often been the ones that they look to to find the answers, and now we're um, helping them look to each other. Let's look in on Ms. Gilinardo's sixth grade math class, where they're learning about ratios and proportions. Okay, so four boys for every five girls, or four to five. And what does the five to four mean, Abby? I think one thing that looks different this year is there's a lot more interaction between students than I ever had before. I think the, the methods I'm using are a lot different than I would have used in the past. I think I'm showing them more ways to solve a problem, giving them more strategies than I ever used in the past. So you can see Mrs. Mr. Shaw did more, didn't he? And now into this year, I can see it's a whole different process. And I really think in the long run, students are gonna, going to understand mathematics better. They're going to understand why things are happening. So I think it's a very positive move, uh, falling back to Common Core rather than what we used to do in the past. We move now to the high school, where Miss Breaker's 10th grade English class is discussing the development of the characters in St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves. That's a short story they've been dissecting for the past 10 weeks. They'll spend a total of 17 lessons on that text alone. And some of those lessons take a day. Most of them take more than a day. So you're going much deeper with information. You're doing more close reading. The process is much more intense. It takes much longer. We're going at a slower pace. So you're covering less, but the idea is that you're learning more. I know you're in the middle of 14 right now, but we need to talk about SL9-10. The kids all received a Common Core Learning Standard tool, so that maps out the standards. And what it does is it's something that they carry with them every day. And so at the beginning of each lesson, we'll go over what the standards are for the lesson. And then they talk with a partner, they try to understand it in their own language, understand what's expected, so they know, okay, here's what we're doing for the day, and here are the common objectives of the day. You need to relate it to the text depending on what stage you're working on in your group. Especially this generation is really caught up in instant gratification and just getting things quickly. And so sort of the surface level, the, the kids always get the surface level of meaning of things, but now it's making connections with the outside world into the classroom. Um, also looking deeper at the literary elements of a story and how that develops throughout and I think it helps them to have a better comprehension of what's going on. Our last stop is Mr. Allegretti's 10th grade English class. They're also working on St. Lucy's Home for Girls, and the students just finished their final essays on the novel. Today, they're doing peer reviews of those essays. And so it gives them an opportunity with some real hands-on experience to look at other, their peers' papers, and also to compare it to something rather than some abstract notion of what a good paper is. And then go through it, analyze it, and use one of these rubrics. Remember these rubrics I gave you, where you score one, two, or three, or four? But certainly, uh, higher standards are good for everybody. We want to challenge the kids. We want to you know, give them an opportunity to, to rise above the sort of norm that they've been used to, perhaps, and to, to strive for something a little better. If you have questions about how Common Core is affecting your child's classroom, you're encouraged to talk to their teacher or teachers. You can also find Common Core materials on the district website at bpcsd.org.